my uh, thoughts on this, uh, and, and, and I want to very much say that I don't have an answer for this, but my thoughts on this would be uh, that I think it's important that you develop a, an understanding of sin that goes beyond points on the day of judgment. Right? It's very important that they understand that disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not a great accountant that we meet on the day of judgment who tabulates things and we go to hell or to heaven. A relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be developed in which there starts to become a type of love of his obedience and a shame with his disobedience. And the number one way to do that, and this is very difficult for all of us, is to model that. Right? Uh, this is not something that you can simply say to your child. You can use uh, conversations to further reinforce that. Um, but I would, I would help uh, the young adults to start to see the impact of sin upon the heart. Right? That if a bone heals, why shouldn't I just break your bone and it'll heal over time? Why not? Right? If you can lose weight, why can't I just, why don't we eat five cheesecakes in a row and gain 10 pounds, right? Over Eid, which sometimes happens. But then, and then it's okay because we can go to the gym, right? Because there's heart disease, there's consequences. And so it's important to help the child to see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created this world of asbab, right? There's a famous uh, Moroccan saint who said, that the entire universe is meanings that Allah put into forms. Whoever realizes this will have learned many lessons. What does that mean? That Allah has placed many spiritual lessons in the physical world. It's a meaning. What happens to a plant if you pour Coca-Cola on it and you keep it in the dark? What happens to it? It's going to die. What happens when you give it water and sunlight and good soil? It's going to grow. Help the young adult start to see their spiritual heart as something that's real. This is not just haram, halal, day of judgment, adab. I can just make tawbah, right? They have to start to see that they, should, they will be ashamed with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second thing is, of course, the ulama talk about a pre-planned tawbah not being a true tawbah. You cannot intend to sin and say, but I, then I will repent. The third aspect is obviously that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only knows how long our lives are, and you don't ever want to feel safe from the makar of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is playing for you. You don't know. If we, Allah's forgiveness is there so that if we sin, we don't despair and that we can get out of it. It's not there to be abused. Okay? And so the ulama, they talk about the, that there are two wings that have to balance each other. Hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy and fear of his justice and his punishment. If the young person, and this is something the Ulama also talk about, that in youth, you have to emphasize fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he has punishment. And if this happens, you have punishment in the dunya before the akhirah for sins sometimes. You'll have difficulty, you'll have all of these things. But as somebody ages and they've accumulated sin and an elderly person, you remind them of... The, the hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy, that He's merciful, that He's forgiving. But because the youth always looks at Allah's mercy and says, I can get away with things. The elderly person is always thinking about everything that they've done, and they can fall into despair. So you have to help them to balance out their hope with, with a healthy dose of fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and understanding that their hearts are far more than just uh, an accounting booklet of points for the Day of Judgment. I'm, and I'm not making light of sin and, and reward on the Day of Judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala erase all of our sins, inshaAllah. That's, that's easy for Him to do. But to also understand that this is the meaning of the Prophet wasallam when his own wife asked him, our mother, Sayyidatna Aisha radiallahu anha, she asked him, she said, Ya Rasulullah, why, why do you pray at night until your feet swell? His blessed feet would swell. When Allah has given you paradise, He's promised you paradise and He's forgiven anything you could have ever done. And what was the Prophet's response that we all know? Should I not then be a thankful servant? Should I not then be a grateful servant? It's not just about the points. He has a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's Habibullah. And he's teaching us to take our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala beyond that. Wouldn't you be ashamed for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to see you? Right? As opposed to you'll get sin, you'll get this punishment. Wouldn't you be ashamed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Right? 
And I think these, these are the kinds of conversations that we should work to have um, so that our children understand that these things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made forbidden, He's made forbidden for a reason. Out of His wisdom, His hikmah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Out of His wanting good for us as His ibad, right? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He doesn't see a, a, a harm except that He forbids it. And there isn't something good except that He's, he's encouraged us to do it. So they have to, if they see the sharia as arbitrary, the fun stuff is all haram and right, and the, all the difficult stuff is what we have to do. You have to help them to see it differently than that. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us things that is for our heart and our soul to develop. So these are some thoughts of mine, but I definitely think this is a very difficult question. Um, and it's something, again, that doesn't have a, a, a solution, but has a treatment that you should uh, continue to have.